In this video, I want to begin creating a area scheme that will help me calculate the leasing areas for the tenants in a small commercial office building. So this small building that I have here on screen has four levels and I want to generate an area plan for each of those four levels using the built-in rentable area scheme. Now the rentable area scheme is designed to help us calculate leasing areas. So that's why we're going to use that one and it's included with the out of the box Revit template. So to get started on the architecture tab, I'll go to the area dropdown and choose area plan. Up here at the top, I want to make sure that the type says rentable. There are two choices, gross building and rentable. We want to use rentable this time. And I want to select levels one through four. So I'm going to select level one, hold down my shift key and select level four. You do not want to select any of the roof levels or the street level. We only need area plans for levels one through four and we'll click OK. Now that'll ask me if I want to create area boundary lines associated with the external walls. Now we're not going to talk about area boundary lines in this video. We'll save that for a future video, but just the same, I'm going to suggest that we go ahead and click yes here. And you'll have to do that four times because you're creating four separate views. So if you look at the screen, you'll see that we've got these purple lines that got created at the exterior walls. That's what the question was asking. And again, we'll talk about that more in a future video. But if you scroll down on the project browser, you'll notice that what we just created was a brand new branch on browser called Area Plans Rentable. And if you expand that out, you'll see that you have four area plans here, levels one through level four. Level four is currently open. Let's double click level three to make that the open and active view. Now, the reason I want to go to level three is that the next thing I want to talk about is optimizing the display of this area plan to make it a little bit easier to perform the task at hand. If you think about it, we do this all the time in Revit. We're constantly creating views for a specific purpose. You know, to perform some task, we sometimes create its own view and we customize the display of that view to help us with that task. Well, areas are no different. So we've got these area plans and what we can now do is customize them to optimize their display to suit the task of creating area elements. So let's get rid of the categories that we don't need to see, okay? We've got, for example, this scope box floating out here around the building. Now it's outside the building. It's not really going to be a problem, but just the same. I don't really want to see it. So I'm going to select it over here on the modify tab, click this little light bulb icon and choose hide category. I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll repeat that for a piece of furniture and hide that category and an electrical fixture like this light switch and hide that category. I don't actually want to see elevations and sections in this view. Now that's up to you. You may want to see them, but I find them a little distracting for the purpose of creating areas. So I'm going to hide that category and select one of the sections and hide that category as well. In fact, I don't really need to see column grid lines in this view. So I'm going to hide that category and you could continue hiding any of the categories that you don't need to see that don't directly help you with creating areas. Now we've got this stipple pattern displaying across the view and that's probably the most distracting of all. Now that's part of the floor element, but before you get tempted to hide the floor category, uh, let me just take you down to the level two floor plan and point out that that may not be what you want. So here's actually a railing and if I press tab right next to it, there is the floor slab and if I select it, and hide that category that hides the entire floor slab, including the edge and that double volume space right here. So I'm going to do control Z to undo that. That's not really what we wanted to do. So instead I'll go back to level three and we want to customize the visibility graphics of this view. Now you can get there on the view tab, or you can just simply type the keyboard shortcut VG to open up the visibility graphics dialog. Now, instead of hiding the entire category, like we did with electrical fixtures and furniture, so we're going to not uncheck floors. We're going to leave it displayed. What we want to do instead is customize the way it displays. So here under projection and surface in the patterns column, click the override button. And this is what you want to hide. You want to hide the pattern by turning it invisible. So you just uncheck that visible box, click OK a couple times, and that will turn off the display of that stipple pattern. So now this view is much cleaner, it's much simpler, much easier to see what we're doing. Now, I don't want to have to repeat this times four. 
if you type WT, the shortcut for window tile, you'll see that all of your rentable floor plans are still open on screen. So we've got level three here, we've got level four, we've got level two. Uh, now this is the original floor plan that was open when we started the project. That's not actually the area plan. So I'm gonna close that, double click level one area plan, type WT again, and now we have the four area plans open and tiled on the view. And the way that level three is displayed is the way that I want all of the others to display. So I need to capture these settings and apply them to these other views. And you can do that with a view template. So go to make sure that level three is the active view. Just click anywhere on that title bar. Go to the view tab. Go to the view templates drop down. Choose create template from current view. Give it a name. Click OK. I'm going to accept all the defaults here and click OK again. And now I've created that view template. And now to apply it to the other views, I'm going to apply it as a permanent property of those views. To do that, on the project browser, I select level one, hold the shift key down and select level four. That selects all four of those views. You can see that up here on the properties palette because it says views and then four in parentheses telling me that I have four items selected. So let's scroll down, locate the view template option. And instead of none, I'm gonna click there and assign it to the typical area plan view template. When I click OK, you'll see all the changes get applied simultaneously to all of the other views. Now, more importantly, when you apply it this way as a permanent setting of the view, you now can make changes to the view template and those changes will immediately apply to all four of the views at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is click over here into my level three floor plan again and I'm gonna type ZA, which is the keyboard shortcut for zoom all, just to kind of zoom everything to fit the screen. Now, if you move your mouse around in the level three floor plan, notice that there are several room elements in this floor plan. And if I click over here into level one, there's some here in the core area as well, right? So there's like a corridor and a, you know, there's a lobby out here. Now, you might argue that no big deal, you know, the rooms are invisible anyway, so they're not really distracting. But the challenge is gonna be that if you hover over them and you see that little X, the area objects look exactly the same way when you hover over them. So if you've got both rooms and areas displayed in the same floor plan, it's gonna make it a little more difficult to select the right one. So unless you need to see the areas, I would recommend hiding them in that view, okay? So what we're gonna do is you can't go to VG anymore because everything in VG is grayed out and that's because we're using the view template now. So what we're gonna do instead is go to the view template dropdown, choose manage view templates, locate our typical area plan view template, and then over here we do VG overrides for model. Click the edit button locate the rooms category and turn it off. Now we also have room separation lines visible in these views. So that's under the lines category here. So I'm gonna expand that and choose room separation and uncheck it. And then I'll okay and okay again. So now the room separator that was there, for example, has disappeared and notice that none of the rooms are displayed anymore. They're no longer visible on this view. So now these views are ready for us to begin creating boundaries and areas. We've removed all the distracting elements, any clutter that was on there, and it's gonna make it much easier to perform the task at hand, which is to place area boundaries and area elements. And that'll be the subject of the next few videos.